Welcome to Gutter Trash episode 282. Black Canary and Zatanna Blood Spell. <laughs> my name is Eric. I'm Jason. Hello. What's up? You're still wearing a mustache. I am. I'm still wearing it. As if it's like something I picked up at the dollar store. Uh huh. Yeah. And you're mm-hmm. like, get rid of that, you know, funny hat. Yeah. Uh huh. It's kind of exactly like that. Similar. Yeah. It cost me even less than a funny hat. Right. It just cost me my integrity. (laughs) (laughs) You know, your integrity was always questionable. Right. So, I think the real loss of integrity that's happening here (laughs) is on the part of your girlfriend. Oh, because she's allowing this? You've, she's seen you by now with it. Oh, a couple times. And you still have it. Right. Which means that she either doesn't care or uh, fully approves. She actually said she thought, thought I should extend it. Cause for the listener who doesn't see me, <laughs> it's a mustache and it just barely peeks down past my lips here. Uh-huh. Uh huh. She said I should extend it all the way down to the bottom of the chin like James Hetfield style. You should not. I, I, yeah, I don't think I want that. You, you, it's, it's extended too far as it is right now. It's, if anything, you need to trim it up if you're going to keep it. If I'm going to keep it. Yeah. Right. Now so, maybe a John Waters kind of, kind of thing. I've thought about that. I don't think I could, <laughs> I don't think I could pull it off. Maybe if I had a suit. Right. If I looked a little dapper, more yeah, dapper. Yeah. Um, right now I have a Ken Mentor comic book t-shirt on. Right. Not exactly dapper. Not super dapper. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I might, uh, I might trim it. I yeah. might keep it. Yeah. Then it would look like my, my brother. He usually wears a mustache yeah. and, he, and he has the same face as I do. Right. So that might get confusing. Mm, he's got less hair than you do. He's got less hair and he's, he's older. Yeah. And he's usually got a, like a New York Mets jersey on. Right. Yeah. So yeah, okay. <laughs> We're probably safe. Yeah. Um, yeah, but really I'm just disappointed in Kathleen and right. this whole situation. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with her? <clears throat> I can only just assume that, you know, she's been under some stress lately and it probably just, right. just slipped her mind yeah. to be angry about this. Maybe it was, well, I don't know if I told you when she first saw it, I didn't tell her that I shaved my right, beard off. Yeah. And so I showed up to uh, her house with uh, just my mustache on, you know. And I was and like, only the mustache, <laughs> only the mu- yeah, <laughs> and a sock. <laughs> Red hot chili pepper stuff. No, no, I like knocked on her door, and for some reason, oh, like I ate something like garlicky, like for lunch. <laughs> and so, like on the way over there, I was like, ah, oh, sh- I-, I should probably like freshen up the old breath. And I opened the glove box, and I had some gum in there. So I was like chewing gum, which I don't usually chew gum, right? And so I knock on her door and I open the door, or she opens the door, and like I'm just standing there chewing gum, like smiling with my mustache on, and she's like, and the first thing she said was, the gum's a nice touch. <laughs> which made me proud of her. You know, that was, that was pretty good. <laughs> As much as I don't respect her right now, she is pretty quick. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that was awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> so other than my, my follicles. Yeah. What else is going on? Uh, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Re- read a comic. Re- you read a com- uh, We both did. Yeah, yeah, we did. It's this one that's sitting in front of us. It's called Blood Spell. Yes. Black Canary. It's a yes. You know, it was originally called something different. Yes, it was. Uh, it said so in the back, and the I can't j- remember. The Jump. Or Jump. Jumper. 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 Yeah. I think it was Jumper. Yeah. Probably changed because of that horrible movie that came out. Oh, was there a movie called Jumper? Yeah. Uh, with uh, the guy what played... Uh, Anakin in the uh, prequels. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense then. And I actually think Bloodspell is a better name than Jumper. Yeah. 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 Especially since the word Jumper only applies to like two pages of the comic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Bloodspell is much better. Right. But, you know, uh, they did say that uh, the the script went through some heavy changes. That's true. So, And I didn't read the script. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. read scripts. No. Yeah. Even when I'm the artist, like if Brian John Mitchell sends me something, <laughs> I don't read the script. I'm just like, well, I'm assuming it's going to be dark and brooding and maybe, you know, depressing. Right. So I'll just draw whatever that goes with that. 
Maybe maybe I'll like read the name of the book. <coughs> you know, right, that, right. that way I know what characters to draw. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Paul Denny. Paul Denny. Who uh, is it? Denny or Dini? I don't know. I I, I go Denny. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, but yeah, he's a. Uh, <clears throat> writer and producer from uh, Batman the Animated Series and Justice League and Superman the Animated Series and all the really good classic DC cartoons yeah, in the past yeah. 20 years or so. Yeah, yeah him and uh, Bruce, Bruce Tim, Tim yep. they, they introduced Harlequin together, right? Yes, they did. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's something. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I know that Paul Denny has... Uh, I don't know if it's an obsession, but uh, he he definitely has a, a fondness for Zatanna. Yeah, uh, I believe his wife is a very Zatanna esque uh, right. uh, stage uh, magician. I just found that out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, <coughs> not just now, but right. today. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, so so you know he's uh you know they say write what you know and I, he he knows uh, a magician who was. Uh, Dress is kind of sexy, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, like instead of jumper or blood spell, I think it should have been called super titties. <laughs> that may have been horribly offensive to somebody. Really? Yeah. Well, those are the type of people that we don't want listening to this show <laughs> or reading comics. <laughs> um. <clears throat> so you hated this? I did not hate it. But I did not like it. Hmm. I kind of loved it. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. Kind of absolutely loved it. Really? Yep. Okay. I'm curious. Um, it's a fun comic. It is. Yeah, I agree. With that. It's a fun superhero comic, and it doesn't take itself too seriously. And there's a pretty decent plot. Has fantastic art. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, these are all things that you can't actually find in a DC comic nowadays. <laughs> right? Okay. I would say this is better <laughs> than any DC superhero comic. Like, I would much rather read this than any DC superhero comic on the market now. Like, uh, uh, All I know is that I was like ten pages into this thing, and I realized that I had been grinning the r- entire time r- while reading r- it. Right? And that is a nice feeling. Right. And you weren't getting a massage or anything nope. during, during the nope. thing, just right? reading. Yeah. Just reading the comic. Yeah. Well, I will agree. It was, it was, it's a fun comic. I just, for some reason, couldn't get into it. Like, I've never been a huge fan of either of the characters. Like, I honestly think the last time I read a comic that featured either of those characters was Justice League 194, Death is in the Cards, from like, oh, the yeah. late 70s, early 80s. Um, so I'm not, I'm not too familiar with, with either of them. Well, I'm, uh, I am a big fan of both characters. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's, uh, that's the thing, I guess. Yeah, I mean, but it, it wasn't, like, I, okay, I didn't really enjoy it that much, but not because it was bad. I just, I don't know, I just wasn't really into it. Mm-hmm. I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't get into it for some reason. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I can't even figure out why, because it was fun, but, I don't know, I just didn't think it was great. I mean, it's not high art, for sure. Is that what you were expecting when you were expecting high art? No, I I think I just thought there would be a better story. Mm. Like, I didn't really dig the story. I did think the art was really good. Oh, yeah. Um, Uh, Joe Quinones is the artist. Yeah. I think. Cause, well, okay, so I've actually been hearing about this book for quite a while. Uh, it's just one of those things that has just been in the works for years. And, uh, I'm pretty sure that, uh, this may, he may, Joe Quinones may be like the third artist that had been attached to oh, this. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Man. Uh, <clears throat> and then of course with every reboot and whatever happening here and there, that's, uh, you know, I'm sure the future of the book was always sort of in question, huh, right? Uh, but probably it seemed like, on the back burner. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it seems like uh, they just decided uh, that they didn't care that this uh, was flying in the face of everything that uh, DC currently stands for, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which know, is mostly about maiming. Uh, yeah. See, I had <laughs> okay. That might be part of it too. I hadn't really thought about that 
as far as the comparison between other DC superhero books. Mm -hmm. And, like, that would make a huge difference. But I haven't read... Like, I don't really read superhero books anymore. And and it's not like I'm above them or beyond them. I just... I like I don't really buy them anymore. I don't buy comics anymore. Well, it's because you don't have a job. I don't have a job. And when I and when I do buy comics, it's usually you know like something indie and right. and weird. So something that you traded somebody for. Something I traded somebody for. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, so like usually the books I read are are pretty fun, at least to me. You know, like some of them are dark, but right. they're fun. So like I wasn't like, man, this is a f- breath of fresh air. It was, you know, what I'm saying, right? Like, right. Because I'm I'm not. Like, maybe, like, last year or <clears throat> two years ago when I was reading, like, a lot of... Like, I was reading Batman and just a lot of whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it would have been more exciting for me. But I do... Yeah, like, I do think the art's great. Like, I like Joe Canis. And uh, I'd, I'd only ever seen two things by him, um, which I thought were, like, pretty different stylistically. I mean, like, you could tell it was him, but he did the Green Lantern thing in Wednesday Comics. Yeah. And then he did... Uh, a couple of, like fill-in issues of of FF, yes. but, like, and I thought the FF stuff, like maybe he was, maybe it was the coloring, but it kind of had a a Mike Allred look to it. I'm sure, I'm sure Laura Allred probably colored it, so right. you know. But uh, even just the drawing style, like maybe it was a little more tweaked towards that. Could be sixties-ish kind of. Maybe. Uh, I mean, I've always, I mean, yeah, maybe. Uh, because, yeah, I can pretty much always tell his artwork whenever I see it, you right. know, because uh, I do follow him on Tumblr and whatever. So, you know, he posts quite a bit of art, you know, sketches and whatever. He does a lot of cover artwork, too. Yeah, uh, I can see that. I think he's a fine artist. I'm, like, I'm just not as into the style um, that, like, like Bloodspell was drawing. Like, it kind of reminds me of Adam Hughes a little bit. And I've never been a, like, I respect him. I think he's a great illustrator. I think you're entirely wrong about that. Really? Yeah. You don't see the, yeah, similar... I mean, uh, no, not at all. Really? Other than boobs. I don't know, like, just the, like, the, the, the way that he draws faces and hair and just, oh, like, no, the poses. not at all. Really? I think Adam Hughes draws, uh, generic faces. Hmm. Like, like, I love Adam Hughes. Uh, he ruined my life, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, it, it reminded me of that for some reason. No, I don't get that at all. Maybe mm. like similar coloring styles, but mm, yeah, maybe. no, I don't. I don't see them as having similar styles at all. Because, mm. uh, because, I mean, yeah, I, I view Adam Hughes as more of a pinup artist, and and you know, a lot of his characters just kind of have, I mean, pretty but plain, generic faces, whereas. Kenyonas puts a lot of character into There's, all of his characters. Yeah, they're definitely expressive faces. And, and sure. like, you can look at Black Canary and Zatanna and tell the difference between the two other than blonde hair, black hair. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, they have distinct faces. Yeah. And that is something that not a ton of artists do. Right. Especially in mainstream comics. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and I don't think Adam Hughes does that. Right. Okay. Yeah, it just reminded me of it for some reason. But like I said, I'm not a huge fan of Adam Hughes, so right. I I couldn't even pinpoint exactly <clears throat> what would be the similarities and differences because I'm I'm not too familiar, other than just seeing his covers. I would, I would say if there is a similarity, it's probably in coloring stuff. So. Right, that might be that might be yeah. what it is because I think Kionis colored this stuff too. I can't recall. I'm gonna look. Yeah, because it's right here in front of us. It might is. Might as well reference it occasionally. Uh, no, he did not color it. Uh, Dave McCraig colored it. Hmm. No, yeah, I do not see any similarity at all. If anything, I see a similarity of, like, Terry Moore. I could see that, too. Yeah, yeah. Or I think I even see a little Paul Pope here and there. Really? Yeah. I don't see any Paul Pope. Uh, very little. <laughs> it's not brushy and, and right. weird like Paul Pope, but just... Structurally, like Paul Pope. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, I could see that. Uh, yeah, he's he's really good. He's really good. I kind of love him. And, um uh, kind of wish I could have his art babies. <laughs> <laughs> you might still be able to have his art babies. <laughs> you're young, you're young yet. 
<clears throat> all I know is like I look at uh, his artwork that he posts all the time, and like the man is a master of the dry brush, and it infuriates me. Oh yeah, I was that was something I was gonna mention. Is that like because in the back they show some of his pencils? Yeah, and I was comparing some of the pages because as I was looking at the pages, I was like, how how did he like like especially looking at the pencil pages? I was like, man, these are so detailed and amazing. Like, did he just, like, somehow tweak them in Photoshop? But when you compare them, like, they're different. Like, yeah. Like, they have dry brush style, uh, things on the pencils, even. Yeah. Like, and then, and then it's, and then it's, and it's similar, but it's, like, not, you can tell it's not just, like, tweaked. you know, tweaked. Yeah. It's, yeah. like, completely different. So, yeah, that was impressive. Yeah. He's, he's a very good penciler. It's, like, very full. Like, if, if somebody was inking his stuff, they wouldn't have any question about yeah. what to do. All right, yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that was cool. I like to see the pencils in the back. Um, yeah. I, I know he's, uh, he's gonna be doing, uh, the Big Trouble in Little China covers. Yeah. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I think he's among, like, cause what, it's Dynamite? Or or boom, boom, maybe boom, boom, or, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Dynamite. All I know is all those, uh, non-Marvel DC, uh, companies have like 30 different covers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he is one among many. Right. Cause I think Eric Powell is also doing covers. Mm. And That's cool. Some other people. It's Josh Brawl. Yeah. Uh, we'll explain that later. Maybe. I'll forget. Whatever. Uh, Josh Brolin was going to be Thanos. Yeah. Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> I just heard about that a day or two ago. Some Doogie told me about that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? That Doogie tells me comic book information. Uh, well, <laughs> that and that Josh Brolin is yeah. going to be Thanos. I can see it though. He's pretty rugged. He just. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess he's just doing the voice, but. Oh, okay. they're not like basing his no, yeah. movements or anything. Yeah. Uh, I think they should totally put Josh Brolin in a giant rubber suit, like like a uh, <laughs> Sweetums from uh, Sesame Street or Muppets or whatever. Muppets. <laughs> That'd be pretty great. That'd be awesome, yeah. wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, weird. That's yeah. weird. Anyhow, uh, um, so so it's like yeah, it's like kind of a a fun heist story. Kind of, yeah. Uh, it starts out and then and it's. Kind of switches into like a kind of murder mystery kind of. It's a murdery mystery heisty superhero-y comic with a lot of magic. With a lot of magic, mm-hmm. uh, which which is fun. Uh, yeah, I always like these two characters, mm-hmm. and, and uh, I mean, it is kind of a ridiculous concept gimmick that you know it's a team up because they both wear fishnets, right? But also kind of awesome. They, they make a reference to that, yeah, so they yeah. poke fun at themselves for the fishnet thing. Yeah. Uh, but you know, and then, then, like, it kind of touches a little bit on the, the past of, uh, both Black Canary and Zatanna. You know, how they met and, and how they became friends and... Is that something made up for this? Because I honestly don't I guess know. so. Is I it? think so, okay. yeah. Yeah, cause, uh, like, Black Canary is kinda like camping on the side of a mountain and Zatanna's just flying over the mountain. Yeah. And, with magic. Yeah, with magic. Yeah. And I thought that was a good scene because, uh, uh, kind of Black Canary, Black Canary, Black Canary kind of calls her out on, uh, you know, how, like, you know, like Black Canary climbed the whole mountain herself. Right, right. And as Tana just floated up there. And I like how, you know, even though Black Canary is already gone, there's a scene where you see Zatanna just like kind of like sigh and like, she's like, I'm going to prove that I can do this to myself. And right. she climbs down the mountain. I, yeah. thought, I thought that was cool. Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely cool parts of it, and I'm, and I'm not slagging on it. I just, for, for, I just didn't really enjoy it that much. Like, it just wasn't my type of thing for some reason. Well, I'm sorry. If, if Liefeld would have written it, and or <laughs> drawn it, I would have been behind it. And I would never have bought it. <laughs> right. So, we wouldn't have ever read it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I guess this is the end of Gutter Trash, though. Yeah, I was expecting as much. <laughs> no, it, it, I, can't, <clears throat> I can't unrecommend it. I can't say don't read this. It's it's fun. You'd probably like it, people. Uh, you know, yeah, I would uh, give it a great recommendation. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's what I want out of superhero comics yeah. and that I don't get a lot, especially from DC. Uh, I mean, I've figured it out that I'm reading two DC books anymore. 
that are buying two DC books. And it's Wonder Woman and Batman 66. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't, didn't Joe do some Batman 66? Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah. Or all of them, right? No. Or, no. No. Okay. Uh, he did, uh, I don't know if he's done any additional stories, but he did the first, uh, Joker story. Okay. Uh, which I think was like issue three of the, the printed comic. Uh, which, which was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't read, I only read the first issue, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was very cool. I liked yeah. it. And, you know, yeah, like, like, I just, it's superheroes and I'm fucking tired of just gritty, dark, dismembery. <laughs> Right, <laughs> mutilated superhero books. I totally agree with that. I, mean, I, I would much rather read this than than the New Fifty Two equivalent, right? Yeah. Or you know, and then, then they're wearing classic costumes, mm-hmm. which is nice. No pointless seams for no reason. Bullshit. You know, the last <laughs> comic I read was a Tana that she had a completely different costume. Yeah, because uh, in that, like the the one in Blood Spell is obviously much better. Uh-huh. Um, but I. I, I kind of am from more familiar with that weird 80s costume that she had that was like, kind of covered her whole body and it was, it kind of looked like something an alien would wear. Oh, uh, with the, uh, it had like a white, uh, piece that went around her. It neck. was like almost a stylized tuxedo costume, like spandex tuxedo. Uh, and it had, it had like, like a, a weird white cape or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It had like a, like a red, Caterpillar sitting on top of her head or yeah, something. Yeah, that sounds right. It's yeah. in the book too. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she's upside down and strapped to a giant machine. Oh, uh, yeah. And that, scene. that was a cool flashback with like Granny Goodness. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, there's, yeah, there's flashbacks to like her joining the Justice League and like the key shows up. Right. Uh, <clears throat> there's which, a Martian Manhunter and uh, a yeah. Superman cameo. And, uh, oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, okay, that is yeah, the same costume. Is, uh, yeah. Yeah. Fashion, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I like the flashbacks and, uh, you know, I just thought it was a fun plot and it's also, you know, it's, it's, you know, about these two, you know, pretty busty fishnetty wearing superheroines, but, you know, it's not about that. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. You know, like this, this comic, Passes the uh, the Betchel test. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, which is, of course, you know, two women with names having a conversation about something other than a man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> and I don't think they ever have any conversation about a man in uh, the entire book. Oh, uh, yeah, probably unless they're talking about the casino owner, maybe, maybe at one point. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it totally passes that. And, uh, I, I like the stuff with Ollie Queen too. Oh that was, yeah, that was well, fun. Me too, because I miss him. Yeah. I miss him the way he appears right in this comic. Yeah, he, that's the classic awesome Ollie Queen. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, for the listener that doesn't know, Ollie Queen is AKA Green Arrow, which is Black Canary's bow. Yeah, yeah. possibly yeah. husband, depending on what point in time <laughs> right. this uh, comic took place in. What universe? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I will just call it the better universe than what's currently happening. Right. I don't agree with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, so there is a part of me that does love this book just simply because it's not what DC is currently publishing. Yeah, and, yeah. and yeah, I respect that. Yeah. Because you, you are still reading some... Some stuff, you know, like some Marvel and DC. Uh, I read more Marvel than DC. Marvel is, seems a little more fun, though. They, they, they seem to be going back to, I mean, they still do the endless fucking crossovers that I yeah. can never give a shit about, but they do seem to be going back to that sort of mind frame from the early 2000s, like, you know, just letting creators do crazy things right you know and then you know if it doesn't sell they cancel it but you know at least they're trying stuff right whereas dc is like this is what our books need to be right you know we're gonna we're gonna shit it down your throat until you love it (laughs) yep (laughs) superman is a sad angry piece of shit (laughs) with a terrible costume (laughs) and you're gonna love it you are gonna love it yep 
Uh, superheroes aren't allowed to, to be fun. Uh, everything should just be as gory as possibly it can be for something that's not a horror. Anything. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, that is too bad. That's yeah. Too bad. Um, yeah. but you know, yeah, I enjoyed it greatly. Uh, the art is amazing. Uh, and it's a, it just came out, right? It's like a hardcover. Yeah, one. like two weeks ago it came out. And this is not a collection, it's like a, it's a OGN. Ooh, yeah. Or original graphic novel. Yeah. Uh, Paul Denny, Joe Quinones. I recommend it. Yeah. Jason I, doesn't. I think most people would like it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then, and, uh, I think in the, the sort of climate that we live in now in the, the comic industry and, and everything that, uh, you know, in trying to, to get female characters to not just be sexual objects. Right. You know, I think this is a very good example of how to do that. That's true. Yeah. That's true. It is a breath of fresh air for that. Yeah. I still think it should have been called Super Titties. <laughs> And the podcast is over forever. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 All right. All right. Well, I'm disappointed that you didn't like it. Yeah. I know. I probably should have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll take a break, I guess. All right.
Hi, welcome back to Gutter Trash. Hello. Hey, buddy. Hey. 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 So what's going on? Nothing. Yeah? Yeah. Enjoying this beautiful rainy day? No. You don't like the rainy days? Mm, Not when I get caught in it. Oh, like driving home? Yeah. Well, also, I I, uh, stopped at a store, and as soon as I got out of my car, like, it just started out of nowhere. (laughs) And I got completely drenched. That sucks. Yeah. You weren't carrying any artwork, were you? No. Okay. Yeah. Um, And also, my AC went out in my car, uh, which means that, uh, you know, because it's fucking hot out now. Yeah. And that means I got to drive with my windows down, and so there's, like, this internal debate. Do I drive with my windows down while it's a fucking torrential downpour (laughs) and get soaked, but slightly cool? Or do I suffocate and die of heat stroke, but stay dry? I'd I'd find that happy medium, maybe like just crack the windows and turn the vent on. Uh, That's what I would do. Yeah, the vent just blows hot air now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You should put some ice cubes on the other side of that vent. I shouldn't try. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Nah. Sorry about that. I wish I knew someone who is in charge of the weather. It's not so much the weather. I just wish I had air conditioning. Right. Yeah. Mine went out too, so I'm solidarity, brother. All right. Yeah. But well, you know, my girlfriend doesn't have it in her car either. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess it's uh, like a thing. It's, it's going around. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a social disease here in Dayton. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's like a vast conspiracy by uh, like, uh, auto repair uh, right? shops. Like they go around, like, like they've set up some sort of like cobra-like, uh, contraption. Ooh. Like a satellite thing. Like and the they're... pyramid of darkness? Yeah, yeah. It's the pyramid of hotness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they've, uh, targeted everybody's, uh, car air conditioning. <laughs> that seems like something cobra would do. Oh yeah. <laughs> Man. Where's Sergeant Slaughter when you need him? Uh, just wrestling people in Kentucky. <laughs> Not even professionally. <laughs> no, just like at, at the Safeway. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. He shops at Safeway. <laughs> um, yeah. So I tore up some carpet today. The oh. House. Yeah. We, we decarpeted another room of the house. So, so, I didn't know you were in the model of doing that. Oh yeah, 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 we did, we did, we've done two rooms now, we're gonna do three. Yeah, yeah. Are you just tearing up the carpet or are you actually laying carpet in too? No, we're just getting rid of the carpet because there's tile under all the carpet. Okay. And uh, it's just better. Yeah. yeah carpet's gross. I mean, if you think about it basically, <laughs> It's like you put like a giant towel on your floor uh-huh. and just for years you like walk on it and spill right. shit on it. So you're supposed to clean it and vacuum yeah. it. And... But you can get rid of it and then it's easier. Uh-huh. And it's fun. Like I love destroying stuff and like we got well, to sure. Who doesn't? Rip, yeah. I got to use a crowbar right. and a hammer right. and, and, a, and a box cutter. Right. That was great. Yeah. That was a good time. Uh, my, uh, my girlfriend is planning on, uh, painting her bathroom, uh, over the weekend. So, uh, we're, we're getting ready to do that. I told her I'd help her. So, nice. uh, you know, and then we were talking about it and, you know, I, was, I told her, you know, like I, I'm not good at painting. You know, she's like, I'm not either. And, you know, the ironic part is that we're both artists. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's more of a, a menial, like, yeah, task, yeah. you know, it's not really... Like... I mean, honestly, though, if you give me a roller, then, you know, I can I can do that. Yeah, that'd be fun, you right? know? Yeah. You know, as long as somebody else lays the tape down to, like, you know, block off the... Oh, the that's parts. my favorite part. See, I, 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 that's the part I hate the most. Right. I just want to get straight to the painting. Yeah. If, if I got a paint, I just want to get straight to the painting. Right. Yeah. I like the taping. <laughs> I like the little... Painter's tape. Well, then maybe you could come over Friday and uh, lay the tape down. Hell yeah. All right. I'll bring my crowbar. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of uh, fun tasks, I did something I've never done before in my life the other day. Uh, My lesbian friend couple invited me over. You had sex with some lesbians. I think you know where this is going, (laughs) right? (laughs) 
<laughs> no, no, they uh, they invited me over to do some more lawn work because they need some help with their their lawn care. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, no, uh-huh. I, I like working outside. Not getting got nothing else to do. Um, and not getting paid. <laughs> no, not getting paid. They offered. They offered. It's for exposure, right? Yeah, I want to get my name out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but no, I got to use a edger and a weed whacker for the uh, first time in my life. I've never, we've never weed whacked. We just let the weeds grow. Sure. Yeah. Right. I mean, I like they get crazy. We'll just clip them or pull them up. Right. But, uh, um, Michelle likes like a neat kind of yard, like uh. a baseball field type yard with like the edges square and no weeds and everything. So I got to, I got to do that. And that was like, I'm not a big fan of the edger because it's kind of crazy and it's this blade that just fucking vibrates like crazy. Right. But the weed whacker is pretty fun because it's this like, like kind of like a uh, zip tie kind of thing that just spins around really fast and like destroys things. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I liked it. Like I might actually start doing that around the house. Yeah. Just weed whacking. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, uh, I'm sure my parents, they, you know, they're old. They, they uh, could probably use some uh, help uh, in the lawn yeah. area, you know. Yeah. I'm sure my dad would be more than happy to let you uh, weed whack. Weed whacker. Yeah. What, would he pay me as well? No, it's for exposure. Okay, well, yeah, I'm still needing the exposure, so this is true. I need business cards for the lawn care for hire. Uh, yeah, man. So that's, that's my, uh, I, I think I'm becoming a man. All right. I, I've used tools, I've got a mustache, to, um, <laughs> Destroying things with a crowbar. You're not liking comics anymore. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think I'm growing up. <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this at all. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> How do you think I feel? I'm the one inside of this body. <laughs> uh, well, I think, uh, I mean, because there's an opening now, I think you should get a job at a comic shop. Get back at Mavericks. And, uh, you know, just, just try to, try to get your life back. Right. Yeah, I think I can do it. I think I can. I think I can backslide <laughs> into Purell obscurity yes. once again. Purell obscurity? Yeah. Like the hand sanitizer? Yeah, Purell, yeah. <laughs> uh, I love Purell. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, we uh, that that's a thing that's happened. What? Oh, yeah. That uh, the, the last... Remnants of the the classic Mavericks era is is gone. All right, yeah, it's like if uh, you know it gets down to just Gene Simmons and three other guys in Kiss. Right, Gene Simmons just left. Right, right, yeah. that's yeah. what happened. Yep, Jeremy Hoyt has left Mavericks. Yeah, uh, former guest uh, Jeremy Hoyt, mm-hmm. uh, my yeah. co- my coworker for years, yep. like ten years probably in Mavericks. Yeah, I believe he. Uh, I believe he took my job when I left there. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, okay. Because yeah, cause we did not overlap at all. Uh, but but he uh, is one of the few uh, tolerable people that have worked there, uh, <laughs> right. besides yourself and a Joe G. Yeah. Although apparently Joe G is also still working. There. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of the Peter Chris of Mavericks. So <laughs> <laughs> they invite him back every once in a while. <laughs> Um, yeah, so good for him. Like, he might be moving out of state. Right. Um, to open his own comic book shop. Oh, really? That's kind of his plan. Yeah. Okay. Right. He want, his, his, both of his sisters moved down to Georgia. Mm-hmm. And he's thinking about moving down there and, With uh, the devil? With the devil, yeah. They went down there together, all three of them. Yeah. Um, Were they in a bind? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the lyrics to that stupid song. <laughs> I, I hate that song. Like, like, I can sort of tolerate the Les Claypool version, but I've always just fucking hated the original. <laughs> like, like not just dislike, but like, oh, it hurts my head. <laughs> Maybe that's why you hated the comic, because you just don't like fun. I know, yeah. <laughs> I'd rather listen to that. I do kind of love that song. Right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would much rather listen to the, the Les, Les Claypool version right. any day of the week. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I do kind of just enjoy that song in general. <laughs> I, I never did. Never, never have. There wasn't like one, you know how like sometimes you're like, 
you hate something, but at one time you loved it, which uh-huh. makes you hate it even more. Right, yeah. But, but I've never, there wasn't one second of my life that I enjoyed that song. <laughs> at, at least the original. I mean, I, I like, I would rather never hear the Les Claypool one ever mm-hmm. again, but, uh, I, I, if I had to hear one version, that would be the Les Claypool one. Yeah. What, what if, uh, what if you saw the Les Claypool video of that song? I've never seen that. It's a pretty fun. Video. Is it? Yeah. 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 It's like claymation. Uh, yeah, I like I like Le- I like Les Claypool stuff. So it's Claypoolmation. Claypoolmation. I'm not as big of a claymation fan as I am like cartoon fan. So, so if it was a cartoon, I'd be more into it probably. Never been a huge claymation fan either. Why not? Because it's too fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like, I like artwork made out of tears. <laughs> like if, if instead of clay they had used tearmation. Uh huh, yeah. Maybe I would enjoy that more. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, Jeremy is, might be moving down. Yeah, he might, might be moving on Georgia. Yeah. Well, why doesn't he try to open a comic shop here? Uh, I think, uh, the Dayton area desperately needs one. <laughs> I think the market he th- feels is saturated, whereas down there, he has family and there's zero, there's one comic shop and he said it carries mostly porn and some comics. Uh-huh. And, and it's like a college town. So there's right. a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people. A lot down of there. people buying porn. A lot of people buying porn. I mean, he said he could do porn much better than that other porn shop. Right. Um, <laughs> he knows where the sick shit is. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I wish him luck, whatever he does. Yeah. But I'm happy for him because he's been kind of disgruntled there for ten years. Ten years, yeah. No, I'd say like five years. So. <laughs> four, four or five years. It's been a while. Mm. Like, like I remember, I can still remember this conversation we had once when I was like sorting magic cards and helping magic customers, and he was like, "Oh, these fucking magic people, man, they drive me crazy." And I was like, "Oh, they're not so bad." I remember that, <laughs> and like because some of them, you know, were not so bad, right? But it was like before it got horrifying uh-huh. and uh and like even at that point he hated it right. so like he must have just loathed when it when it got like even more so you know? right right so yeah i'm glad for him happy for him you know i kind of hated magic people when i worked there oh wow and that was pokemon <laughs> time right <laughs> yeah magic was just kind of eh, something yeah it was barely a something there yeah yeah Pretty much, if it's a comic shop and there's things other than comics, hmm. toys, toys is fine too. Yeah, comic related yeah, stuff. Yeah, then uh, I think it's all awful. Right. <laughs> oh, you mean you don't like the toys? You like the toys? Are I fine. like the toys. Okay. The toys are fine. Yeah. I, I think as long as there's a a greater ratio of comics to comic ephemera, uh-huh. then it's fine. Like yeah. to have shirts and toys and sure. maybe yeah. even a fucking trash can or whatever. Right. But. But yeah, as long as its focus is still comics, right. uh, I'm fine with it. So you can sell some DVDs, I don't care. Sure. Like sure. Superman cartoons or Why whatever. Not? I mean, it should be a one-stop shop for, you it's, know. But see, that's where the magic in the sports card come in, though, because those guys are all still nerds, and there is some overlap. I mean, it's not as much with the comic toys and things like that. But, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm talking with. like comics. I mean, okay. Comic book movie comes out, makes billions of dollars. Right. Millions of people go see it. The best-selling comic sells, like, what, 50,000 copies? Right, yeah, if that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Justice League. Probably. Right. And so, and, and part of it, I think, has to be terrible comic shops. Right. You know, because, I mean... Cause, well, people cause would rather watch than read. And people would rather do that, but... You know, I am sure that there are people who, you know, went to see the Avengers or whatever and thought, well, that's pretty cool. I wonder what this is about. Right, yeah. You know, and try to go check it out and then, you know. It was on a Friday night magic night. Or, or, you know, they just got treated like shit. Right. By yeah. just asshole comic employees because, you know, strangers were in the store. Right. You know, but, but I think a good comic shop, you know, would uh, be able to accommodate that type of person. You know, like, hey, you know, there's a decent trade selection, and, uh, oh, you, you like the movie, here's some cartoons of the same yeah. character. Instead of just, you know, going, you tourist. Right, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Like, like, who cares how somebody gets into a thing? It's important that they got into that thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. 
like like uh, you know my my ex girlfriend she she loved Hot Girl because of the Justice League cartoon, you know, and she then eventually started seeking out Hot Girl comics, right, and then that grew into like Hawkman comics, and you know she just went from there, yeah, and because of the cartoon, it's a natural progression, right, you know, and, and you know, and, and luckily, you know, I mean. You know, she she had uh, a friendly comic shop to go to, you know, to to do that, and then you know, of course, I helped her out. But you know, like like anyone else would probably go to Mavericks and you know just get treated like crap, unless she actually got to talk to the one girl that works there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she probably doesn't even really know that much anyway. Other than she hates magic. <laughs> I, I think she knows more about comics than uh, most people at Mavericks now. Right. Well, probably, yeah. probably than anybody at Mavericks. Well, now. Jeremy's yeah. gone. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Joe is still there, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so no one will ever know more than Joe. As uh, long as he is still there. Really? Yeah. Uh, but like, you know, like, like even Jack doesn't, has probably no idea what's happening oh, in yeah. comics. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he reads maybe like, I think he takes home a stack of comics every week, but right. I bet he reads two a year. Right. You know, like he just kind of flips through them, or just like doesn't even flip through them, just has them at his house and right. looks at the covers. Unless um, it's uh, bubble art, balloon art, balloon, balloon art. art. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> he knows his balloon art when he spots it. <laughs> oh no. So yeah, so I haven't shopped at Mavericks in years, but uh, I'm gonna be pretty sad when it closes anyway. Yeah. Which it. Probably will. Well, I, if it does close, I have ninety five percent certainty that another comic shop will open in that same spot, oh, and, yeah. and it'll be better. Yeah. So, because I know like three different people that are kind of just waiting for Mavericks to go out of business so they can open a comic shop right there. Right. So, just comics? Uh, no, no, no. Well, then fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think uh, one of them maybe just comics. The other two, no. Magic, comics, crap. Yeah. The comic shop is going away. What's, what, what's the, uh, what, your view of the future? Do you think, like, ten years from now, there'll be, like, hardly any comic shops and it'll be mostly online distributors and retailers or? No, I think there'll still be comic shops. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, well, I don't know. To me, like, like when I think of happy comic shop memories, you know, I think of like going to Chicago Comics, yeah, you know, or oh, yeah. places like that, or even the Bookery, you know, here in Fairborn, you know, where where it is primarily comics, and if they do have games, it is like separate from the comics, yeah, you know, uh, you know, I think to an extent, other than you know, people who uh, own it. Uh, Bill Book and Comics, uh, you know, kind of has uh, something going for it, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I mean, you know, just keep your goddamn Tom Servo puppets out of my face and we'll, we're okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think there will always be comic shops, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's, like, you know, one twentieth as many in ten years. Well, I mean, you know, I'm sure... Well, during the 90s, there was probably, like, a glut of them. And, you know, even here, like, you oh, know, yeah. back when Fearless Readers had a storefront, yeah, you know, I mean, there were three comic shops within a five-minute drive from my house. That's crazy, yeah. Right. I, yeah, I've seen a lot of them go to business that didn't last but a few years. Right. Or a couple years, even. I think what needs to happen is, uh you know, I think the comic shop needs to try to fix its reputation. Right. Because cause what your average person views as a comic shop, you know, <laughs> is kind of, like, you know, horrible. Right. There's and like when you walk into one and, like, all of your fears are confirmed. <laughs> right. Like, there's the leaky roof, there's the flickering light. Right, yeah. There's the roaches, okay. And yeah. this guy's being an asshole right. and creepy. Yeah. <laughs> and he's trying to sell me magic cards when right. I want to buy a Wonder Woman comic. There's a smell... Of some sort. Right. That I can't pinpoint. Yeah. It's either something that, that he's eating or something that has died in the corner. <laughs> uh, nobody here knows where any back issues are. Right. They're like, yeah, they're back there somewhere. Just, yeah, right, yeah. They're probably under those magic cards. And the thing is, like, you know, 
Uh, like like a new customer, I think, would be put off by that. But even when like you have people like me who don't need help and know what I'm doing and know where to look, and, and you know, even when I'm off put by the general attitude right. and, and atmosphere. Yeah, it's not like you're like, oh, I, I can't find what I'm looking for. It's just like I'm waiting through the shit to right. find what I'm looking for. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's disappointing. It really is because I think, like, even uh, as Mavericks as an example, I think that could be an awesome store yeah. if it was just tweaked and you know, yeah, fixed. But uh, it's not going to happen. Probably not. Huh, that's depressing. Yeah, we just made ourselves sad. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm happy. I like sad stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. You don't like fun. That's right. <laughs> Well, I guess I should pick a movie. Oh, yeah. It's movie time. It is movie time. And, uh, I mean, there is the outside chance that this might be fun. Uh, oh. Yeah. So, I don't, uh, I mean. Well, you talked up fun so much in this show, I might give it another shot. All right. Well, I'm going to pick a movie that is actually... Pretty different from anything else that we have ever watched for the show. Really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we are going to watch a movie called Through the Never. Oh. Which is the Metallica concert movie that also has a storyline. Wow. Uh, if it was just the concert movie, like, like just them playing, with, like, you know, backstage footage or whatever, I pr- never would have picked it. That's not a movie. Right. That's a concert. Yeah. But this is a movie. This is a movie. Sort of. Sort of, yeah. yeah. So, uh, it's, it's got the guy from, uh, Chronicle in it, uh, as, as our, uh, lead non-Metallica character. <laughs> uh, he currently is in Amazing Spider-Man 2 as the Green Goblin. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, there, there's actual actors. I think it's directed by the guy who directed Predators. Oh. The uh, the one with uh, Adrian Brody and yeah, Lawrence Fishburne. That was fun. Yeah. But it's also a Metallica concert. Huh. And we have nostalgia for Metallica. Yeah, yeah, both of us. Like, yeah. like varying stages of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, give it a shot, right? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Fuck yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I could come up with a backup if uh, you don't want to. I'm not. I wouldn't veto. Okay. Nah. All right. I'm down. So, uh. Like, yeah. this is not something I would have ever watched him on accord, but right. I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, it is on Netflix. So, Sweet. uh, the, the listener out there can, uh, watch it as well if for some reason you feel like it. Maybe I will try to grow the rest of my mustache <laughs> into the head field <laughs> by next week. Yeah. We should, uh, maybe suck up on some, uh, some beer. Right. Like, yeah. like, I feel like we should make this an event for oh, some reason. Yeah. Okay. Should I we wear like, Metallica t-shirts? Maybe, and... yeah, I don't know. I don't like, have one anymore. I don't either. Uh, I did. Yeah, well, I was... So did I. I have a picture of me, uh, wearing an Injustice for All t-shirt while sitting between two Smurfs at an amusement park. <laughs> when I, and I have a mullet and sunglasses and, That's awesome. and jam shorts and yeah. giant sneakers. Nice, it's a nice. great photo. Uh, I can envision it. I can envision it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh I, I used to have a uh Pusshead uh, Metallica shirt. Oh nice. Uh the Ringmaster. Pusshead's fucking amazing. Oh he's great. Yeah. And he's still doing stuff too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. uh so yeah, so so that's uh but yeah, like I feel like like I mean part of me is like, well, you know, I mean there's a movie element involved, but right. at the same time it's like, are we just gonna sit and watch a band play? <laughs> right. That might be weird. Yeah. Should we get drunk? Right. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, like, should we invite people over? Oh, I see what you mean. You know, More I, people. I don't, I don't know. Kurt, do you want to come over, Kurt? Kurt would be awesome to have over for yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I guess we'll figure it out later. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, through the never. Yeah. Yeah, go check it out. All right. Uh, then that'll happen next week. All right. All right. So goodbye. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Gutter Trash. You can subscribe to the show from guttertrash.net or from iTunes and leave us a review. 
Visit guttertrash.net for email information, links to our Facebook and Twitter pages, and for other podcasts and websites in the Gutter Trash Network. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>